Okay, guys. So when we are talking about antecedents and pronouns, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we are all on the same page as far as the definition. So a pronoun is going to be a phrase that is normally replacing a noun. We're normally all on the same page there. But the antecedent is where we start getting lost. So the antecedent is the noun prior to that pronoun that clarifies what that pronoun actually means. So for example, if our pronoun is going in the blank right here, so right here in this blank spot, that's where our pronoun should go. I'm going to just type in pronoun so we are all on the same page. But over here at the front of the sentence, we see each. And each is part of that pronoun that is going to be clarifying who is going to be wearing these pants, whose pants these are. And based on the antecedent, it decides what type of pronoun you put in, whether you put in his, her, their whether it's singular or plural. And I have this great little chart here for you to help you clarify whether or not you are using singular, plural, or whether you need to analyze the sentence to the side. Now, as you can see, there are a lot more singular ones. So when you have a word like each, everyone, anyone, you are looking at the individual person in that group, not the group as a whole. And so that's kind of a key part to really remember is that if we are looking at the individual in the group, each of my students, okay, well, we're not looking at the class, we're looking at each. And since we're looking at each person individually, that changes the sentence. And so then we are using pronouns that are also singular, his, her, we are not using their. Um, and that's something that's very confused in our current culture is that we have to be very specific in which pronouns we use. Um, there are gender neutral pronouns, but those are not widely recognized on standardized tests yet. So that's just something to keep in mind right now as well. So you can use the his, you can use her. There is the gender neutral pronoun they, which is X-E, but there is, that won't be an option on your ACT test just yet. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, when you use, have something like each, looking at this example sentence here, each boy in Jenny Weasley's class wore, and a lot of times we'll default and say they are. Well, they aren't all wearing one pair of pants. So each boy wore his pants backwards last Wednesday. But if the pronoun is singular, your pronoun will also have to be singular. Um, some other things that we really just need to talk about real quick are vague pronouns. And that's a big problem. A lot of times we use these pronouns, um, them, uh, this can actually be a pronoun in some cases because it's just replacing nouns. Um, them is a big one, you is a big one, and all of these are just making sentences a little bit more vague and changing actually what people mean. So for example, we have these four sentences here and then I'll let you go. Um, dishes were on the table, but we didn't need them. Who are we not needing? Well, technically we're not needing the dishes, but when you take a pronoun, you have to go to the most recent noun. Well, the most recent noun is the tables. We didn't need the tables, so but we didn't need the dishes. Sentence two, um, Henry, Harry was always late for class and this drove his teacher crazy. Well, and this isn't actually necessary because this is implying that there's going to be another noun. Harry is not driving his teacher crazy. It's just his actions. So we're going to change it to which drove his teacher crazy. And that clarifies that a little bit more, gets a little bit more to this, the point, doesn't add any extra words. It's a little more succinct and that's a better choice. Many people go to the gym and they find this gives them more energy. Well, is the gym what gives them more energy? Just sitting in the gym? Because if that's the case, I can bring my bag of chips and sit in the gym. But it's not being in the gym they find that exercise gives them more energy. But notice when we have our pronoun and we just 
replace it, it's creating a vagueness that actually changes the meaning of the sentence, and that's a problem. Um, I never ride roller coasters because they make you sick. Roller coasters really don't make me sick, but people say this kind of stuff all the time. Um, I actually worked a job where I took kids to camp, like from a church camp, and every week we took kids to Silver Dollar City every Wednesday. And this was actually a phrase that was said to me quite often. However, roller coasters don't make me sick, so it's just a false sentence. But that's not what they meant. They meant they made it them sick. So the correct way that what they meant here was if they were saying this to me, they would say, I never ride roller coasters because they make me sick. They being the roller coasters. But when we just replace you as the pronoun, we're often changing the meaning of the sentence. So I hope that helps. If you have more questions, you're always welcome to come sit with me. We'll talk, we'll work on it together. But you are loved. Have a great rest of your day.